great. So uh, I piloted uh, a global classroom course last spring. The Office of International Affairs approached me the spring before that, um, knowing that I taught already a project-based course. And they were interested in these global classrooms being project-based. Uh, and they were interested in my trying to um, bring that to the partnership that the University of Maryland is already, or was at the time already, in the process of establishing with Tel Aviv University. Uh, so I didn't actually pick the partner over there. It was, it's part of a, a larger uh, partnership in teaching and scholarship. Uh, and we sort of said, all right, let, let's give this a try. And they described, the Office of International Affairs described their vision for the Global Classroom course, and they said, you know, you can record your lectures, you can post them, post materials, and you don't even have to meet. Just, just you know, put the students in groups and let them work through their projects. You know, you can, you can advise them online, um, which sounds great um, and, and you know, sexy in a sense. But I, but I also thought, you know, I, the project course I currently teach, I really like having the students give feedback to one another and do this sort of collaborative problem solving, not just by looking at something that they've another team has posted, but kind of trying to hash out some of the problems in a round table format. That's the way I teach it now, so my challenge was then, can I actually translate that to um, a virtual web-based course? Uh, and I took a whole bunch of trainings the summer after we ag agreed to pilot this. I don't even remember what some of them were. I'm trying to figure out which technologies I wanted to use. I thought I would use Camtasia. I didn't. Uh, it settled on Adobe Connect as really being the primary vehicle for this course, and it's proved to be really great. So let me tell you a bit more about the course, and then I'll, uh, I'll explain a bit more about what I did with Adobe Connect. Oops. So Global Classroom, uh, th the way that the Office of International Affairs describes it is that it's cross-cultural, it's virtual, and it's problem project-based or problem-based. So in this case, <coughs> it was indeed cross-cultural. I had 20 students, 10 of them here at UMD, 10 of them at Tel Aviv University. It was not a bicultural class. It was really a global classroom in that it wasn't just 10 Americans and 10 Israelis. Um, in fact, the only Israeli-born student was one of our UMD students, which is really interesting. So my students were from 13 different countries. Of the eight American students, uh, six of them were here, but two of them were in Tel Aviv. So it was a, a really interesting uh, blended, blended group, truly global. That was the easy part. <laughs> and they were, we had undergrads and they had grads, which was uh, an interesting development that we hadn't expected initially, um, but it, it actually posed a lot of really interesting opportunities and some challenges that you would, you would expect as well. So it's also, the Global Classroom is also meant to be virtual, obviously. So I, for classroom purposes, um, I and my co-instructor, by the way, Brian Polkinghorn, uh, we use four forms of virtual communication. Um, Adobe Connect primarily, and then Elm's Canvas for uh, managing the content, which proved to be this whole other technical challenge when we realized that we had to get the 10 Tel Aviv students and the other professor into, to be able to log into Elms. And thank you for always being available on 30 seconds notice when I needed another login, because somebody else just registered for the course. <laughs> and you literally turned it around in minutes, which was awesome. Um, yes. So then also Gmail and, and Skype, of course, we communicated that way. Um, when we had to have one-on-one -on -one meetings, Brian or I with student groups, we used Skype. It was just easier than logging into the Adobe space. Uh, then the students on their own used at least four that I'm aware of, other ways of communicating. Google Hangouts is like Skype, but it goes through Google. Uh, Google Docs, I think you're all familiar with that. Facebook, of course, and WhatsApp, which is a free international and very popular outside the United States chat messaging. It's a messaging service. Uh, the, I think almost all of my teens created Facebook groups to communicate with one another, which actually proved to be a really interesting um, cross-cultural lesson because I think that the American-based students, they weren't all American, but the, the students here at Maryland sort of assumed that students everywhere are in this 24-7 communication cycle where they're always checking Facebook and always checking email. And they'd come in and be like, God, we, you know, we Facebooked our team like 18 hours ago and we haven't heard. <laughs> And, and so it was just like, well, first of all, they were sleeping. Um, and then they're grad students, and some of them have jobs. We had a diplomat at the Jordanian embassy in I Israel who actually had a, a crisis when a Jordanian judge was killed at a border crossing in Israel and had to step out of class, which was an opportunity but a challenge. So all of these kinds of things um, came up over the course of the, of the course. And the course is project-based. So my students were broken into five groups of four students each. There were two UMD students and two Tel Aviv students on a team. So they had to collaborate across universities. Their task was to research and produce creative, viable, sustainable solutions 
to development problems, essentially, with the caveat also that the location that they choose to investigate or work in has to be in some way affected by widespread organized armed violence. Um, it could be in the context of widespread gang warfare, but mostly we were talking about conflict zones. Um, and this is in part because the, where are the minor in international development and conflict management, this is their development capstone here, but the graduate students in Tel Aviv are in a conflict management mediation program and we're interested in how development relates to that. So that and Brian Pokinghorn, my co-instructor, brought in that other piece. Uh, they focused on a, a country of their choice, which they chose within, the, within their teams, and the countries that they chose were literally all over the world, North Africa, South Asia, Latin America, the Caribbean, Sub-Saharan Africa, and the Middle East. And then they had to work to identify and analyze a specific problem in that country based on research they've done on the development challenges and successes there. They had to go through a formal uh, problem analysis um, process uh, and then they had to design community-based solutions to that particular problem. And I say community-based because we're not talking sort of major government-funded infrastructural or, or, you know, or e economic structural change. We were doing community-based development projects. Think digging wells. That, I mean, more, more creative and innovative than that I was pushing them towards, but those kinds of things, right? Um, so they spent the semester uh, going through a series of deliverables that actually walked them through this process of uh, identifying a problem, analyzing it, developing solutions, and forming the basis of a project proposal. And they then had to, the final deliverable in writing was that they wrote as a team, was a three-page project brief, something that could be used as a letter of intent if you're going after a development grant. Uh, and then they had to pitch it to us as, as their funders, uh, to fund them with an A. But uh, they had to pitch it at the end in their groups. And that was another challenge we had to work out was how are they going to do these final presentations, which include two students on either side and a PowerPoint presentation online, live, and then have a Q&A. So that was one of the other things we had to sort out. I'll show you how we did it. Their issues were all over the place as well, from gender-based violence to corruption, democratization, education, several education projects, health, economic development, all sorts of really great, interesting topics. So now I think what I'm going to do actually is, um, and, and the rest of the slides here are, are for me more than they're for you because I had to embed my links somewhere. I ended up last semester recording about a half a dozen of our class sessions, in part because as the semester progressed, uh, it, we were realizing that a lot of the Tel Aviv students had trouble making all the sessions. And this was for a variety of reasons. Some of them were coordination problems when the course was scheduled. Um, Tel Aviv thought we were only meeting once a week and we thought we were meeting twice a week, so clearly there was a communication problem right out of the gate. Won't happen like that again. Um, but that meant that we had to figure out how to make sure that nobody was missing content. So we started recording the sessions, not anticipating I was going to need them for anything other than the students to go back to, but luckily for us we have them. So I think what I'll do is instead of trying to describe to you how Adobe Connect would look if you did this, I'm going to invite you into my classroom and kind of show you uh, uh, on a couple different days, two or three minute clips of different sections of the class where we were using some of the different features of Adobe Connect. Um, actually, before I do that, does anybody here not know what Adobe Connect is or does? Maybe I should explain that first, and it's okay. I didn't until I had to take that training. <laughs> okay, so we, uh, we know what it is. <coughs> Oh, and I should mention also, um, another unexpected complication was that the Tel Aviv professor, who's my co-professor, the Tel Aviv program ended up hiring one of their adjuncts who teaches for them every year, but who's based here at University of Maryland Salisbury. Which is slightly odd, but he's awesome, so that was great. He brought this great experience to the table, but that created a third place that we somehow had to bring in, and it also meant that the Tel Aviv students didn't have somebody in the room with them, which was a whole other kind of challenge. Um, yes, okay. So let's see. It, it takes a minute for uh, Adobe Connect to load the recorded sessions, so hopefully it won't take too long. Yeah. Adobe Connect does it for us, actually. Here, let me, let me pause ah. it. Woo, God. Um, had to play with the audio there. Uh, Adobe Connect has a function. All right, so let me explain that the Adobe, when you're actually using Adobe Connect, there's a bit more going on uh, in the interface than what it actually records. So I, as the, as the host, which is the person who sets up the room, have a whole bunch of menu options at the top that don't appear in the recording because they're non-functional. Um, but those menu options allow me to press record, for example, and it hosts it on in my Adobe Connect um, 
space. So if I log into my Adobe Connect account, it shows me all of the classes that I'm en enrolled in or hosting. And if I click on that, I can go to, I can enter the course space, which is this, or I can go to previous recordings and share the link or make it private or do whatever I want with it. Um, I also have the option of deciding who gets to be a host, who gets to be a, a presenter, and who gets to be a participant. So this right-hand column is always there when we have, or almost always there when, at least the way I was using Adobe Connect, you can get rid of it if you want. Um, you can see Brian and I are at the top as hosts. I make him host every time he enters the room, and that gives him the ability to control the space. So he can mute people, he can add people, he can go back and forth between a PowerPoint and the video, those kinds of things. Presenters are people who have the option to speak and use their video, uh, and then participants are people who are listening. Now, what we had intended to do was have everybody who's in the space logged in as a presenter, except we realized that it created a bandwidth problem. <coughs> so we promoted people as they had something to contribute. Uh, and also at the top, which it doesn't appear in the recording, there's a little hand raisey uh, button. There's an icon of a person doing this. Um, and if somebody presses that, I as the host get a little ding that says somebody raised their hand. So if I haven't seen, and you'll see in a minute when we have the Tel Aviv video up, but uh, if I haven't seen the students on the other side going, <laughs> then you know, they, can, they can push the button and, and I see it, or, or my students will say, hey, somebody raised their hand. So let me also point out, and this is something to think about as you're picking classroom spaces. Who is it who said they're looking for a space? Right, yes. Um, as you're picking classroom spaces, keep in mind the location of the camera relative to the table. Uh, I hadn't really thought about this when I first started looking for spaces, and I thought, well, there are all these great technology classrooms on campus, they're equipped with these great cameras, they're all plugged into the system, except the cameras are back there, and they're meant to capture me lecturing for the purposes of recording a lecture. And then they get the backs of all the students' heads, which is great if I'm the only person who matters, um, but that's not really what I had in mind for the class. Uh, and it's kind of awkward if the students are looking at the backs of each other's heads. Also, then my Tel Aviv students are behind me. So even though I'm looking at them, I can't see them when they're up on video. So as you can see, the way we set up, and this is a, a, a boardroom in Vsauce's um, tech center that they let me use just for the pilot. I can't, I can't use it going forward. But so I had the camera is right here, and the screen is right here. So I, when I look at the camera, I also see the screen, as if I'm looking towards an extension of the table out on this side, which ended up being a really nice setup. There is a room in Van Munching we can talk afterwards where we managed to sort of duplicate that, that setup, one of the ones off the atrium. So is that all I need to say right now? Oh, right, there's the chat function here, which you'll see we use a lot. Uh, and then this does not appear, <coughs> this is purely for the recording that allows you to toggle between the different sections of that particular recording as we went back and forth between sharing content like a PowerPoint and just having a video-based discussion. <coughs> I'm going to show you a couple different clips of different days when we had different setups going on. Uh, on this particular day, we had Brian and me, so I, I am, I'm obviously live with my students here. Uh, Brian is sitting at his desk in, in his office. Um, the Tau, Tel Aviv University classroom, is where most of the students are seated. And Elliot and Shana are logging in from home for reasons that uh, are their own. They opted to log in from Once they figured out they could do that, they're like, wait a minute. <laughs> I can do this in my pajamas? Because our, our, the class ended at 12.15 our time, which during most of the semester is 8.15 PM their time. And, and, it, and it met Tuesday, Thursday. And Thursday is the end of the week in, in Israel, which essentially means it was Friday night. So some of them were definitely like, I'm not going to campus. Um, yes, okay, I'll show you a, a, a minute or so of this. And I'm actually also, I think, at the beginning Fabulous. here. Oh, God. So we're now recording. Hi, everybody. Um, in Jeez. case you weren't all there or couldn't hear me when um, you said it a moment ago, Brian is going to be joining us a little bit late, probably, hopefully, in about five minutes. Uh, and also our guest speaker, Leah Russell, who is going to uh, work with us on um, results framework. And I'll narrate a little bit as things change and move around. Home very sick. So she wasn't even able to, to join us by Skype or, or Adobe Connect, unfortunately. Um, but we'll do our best with what, with what I can do. And um, I think the way that we're going to spend today's class is really setting you guys up for the rest of the semester. <coughs> when I look up here, I'm looking at the camera to talk directly to Tel Aviv. When I look here, I'm looking at the screen where I can see this. Um, this class was never intended to be a, you know, be every single week with Brian and lecturing, it can maybe be partly flipped. 
Let's see. That you guys spend a fair bit of time uh, in working in your groups, working through the material. Not on your own completely. Yay! How are you? He came late to class. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> um, not on the, that, no, the fact that you guys will be spending the next two weeks and a few days after that um, working in your groups doesn't mean that you're left completely. And this kind of rolling <laughs> joining of the class yeah. happened a lot as different people managed to get their connections up and running. So you'll see if we fast forward a little bit to about here-ish. <coughs> You'll see the students have told me who's actually present because I don't have the Tel Aviv video today. And then I welcomed Marina because she came in just just then, actually. So I'm going to switch over to sharing mode and pull up pull up the results framework. Hopefully, here we go. Fabulous. If at any point you guys want to interject with comments or questions, by all means do. Um, folks joining us remotely, uh, jump in there if you want with audio, or just use the hand raise icon at the top again. Um, so we used, in, in this particular case, the Tel Aviv classroom wasn't able to get their video up. Um, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. They were using a laptop, which wasn't ideal, but it was what they had available. Um, and so in this case, the students told me who was in the room so that I knew kind of who we were talking to and I would try to guess whose voice was coming through the, the speaker. And um, very, very often, and they have a great relationship, so they're actually, that was friendly. <laughs> that nobody wants you here was friendly. Um, so very often, I'll, I'll sort of look up and, and I'd say, oh, somebody else joined. Okay, welcome, and we kind of move on from there. And we just had to sort of roll with that. People joined as they, as they could, especially when people were logging in from home with um, questionable connections. Um, so here you saw, I started out, Brian joined, a couple students joined us from Tel Aviv partway through, and then I switched to the um, PowerPoint that I had preloaded into into um, Adobe Connect. I strongly recommend if you're going to use a PowerPoint or any other kind of document sharing, preload it at your desk before you come into the classroom um, because it, inevitably I forgot how to do it by the time I, from between leaving my desk and arriving in the classroom and um, had to fiddle with it and sometimes lost as much as 10 minutes trying to get things organized. Um, but if it's preloaded, you just click share, share what, share PowerPoint, select from the list and it pops right up. You couldn't see me clicking around, but that's, that's what was happening in the background. All right, I'm going to close this. And here we were using the discussion feature and the sharing feature. Sharing is the, the PowerPoint, and also the chat figure uh, as, as students joined. So uh, as I said um, when I described the, the structure of the course, I, I try to make it really about collaborative problem solving as much as possible. A lot of the classroom time was not spent lecturing, as that one I just showed you, a, a good chunk of that was. Most of it was actually where the students in their groups um, took turns. Each team would present a challenge they were working on, something they were struggling with, maybe a logistical or service delivery challenge or an ethical dilemma, um, whatever it was, and the rest of us would discuss it, try to unpack it a little bit, and then maybe offer suggestions or ask pointed questions and try to move towards uh, a stronger, better project. And so here I have a couple clips of, of how that looked because, and this was the, this was the most difficult thing I think to pull off because we had all of our students, all of their students, Brian and me, some of their students by the way, and, and there, I mean they're all our students, but some of the Tel Aviv students in different places uh, trying to have really a discussion, right, a round table discussion. And we wait slowly, slowly. I'm guessing. But uh, with that, what do you think? So is let's see. What did I want to show you? Six again, or what? Sometimes I didn't remember to start recording until after we were already talking. My students would say, "Aren't you recording this?" Oh yeah. Still. God. So avoiding that. So so then the right. next question to the rest of us is what kinds of um, what can you do through these community meetings and other other um, avenues to 
help ensure that you're really listening to them and you're bringing them to the truth or if they like tell you all about Tech troubles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and also how to ensure that you're not imposing this is my this is the classroom in Tel Aviv. In front of you and really making sure that once the project is launched they can actually like keep going without like the NGO always being there, you know? But also having the support of the men in the community would help with that. So it's just a community effort. So it was so if we went the NGO, their project the that they are, along are with two students community. in the back over there. On with the project after we leave. That's really important. So, Brian, go ahead. Can you build into your brief some exit strategies or put it in as a definite expectation that this is something you come in? <clears throat> so, Brian and I would tag team in, in a very informal way, just sort of jumping in back and forth. Um, it always worked out fine. We didn't feel that we needed to structure it very formally. Uh, we have very different backgrounds and very different expertise, so that actually ended up working really well. Um, the students, what, you, what I fast forwarded past was the students on this end presenting some of the trouble that they were having. These two who are on the same team joining in and sharing some of their, their concern about imposing Western views on, on a community. I think this group was working in Ethiopia, um, so women's I empowerment in Ethiopia. So classroom about how they can help to ensure yeah, from the men. <laughs> this is Sushil, he's from Nepal, and uh, Jerry from Venezuela, and they both weighed in here and the conversation continued. Uh, let's see. And we have the chat fe feature kind of going on, on on the right side. I often would use the chat function myself as students were talking to clarify something that might not have been clear. What you see here, illicit crop eradication, crop substitution and reforestation, that was from the first group that had presented in this space. Um, and I had put up what the topic that they were working on was because it wasn't clear to everybody. All right, I'll show you one other, one other thing. Um, let's see. And I wanted to show you two other things, but I won't subject you to listening to us talk for very long. So here, they don't want to socially reproduce the conditions they find themselves in on their, their children. Every parent wants to have their children stand on their shoulders. I also clearly started recording a little late there. Oh, so this class, the reason the recording starts, uh, the reason the recording is only 21 minutes long um, is because I didn't record the first section, session, and I can talk more about this if you're interested. Um, which was using the breakout room feature in Adobe Connect. I wanted to give students time in class to meet with their partners and discuss, I forget what the topic was for the day and how it pertains to their, their particular project. So, you know, Brian or I would present a little bit of content, some questions, say, all right, go meet with your teams, talk about how this, this relates, and then let's come back together uh, and, and work through this in, with, with respect to your particular project. So in the first, really, almost an hour, um, and you can't see the way the breakout features look here, but there's an option down here for um, breakout room. And what I just said was get in a breakout room with your group. Um, I can create the rooms and I can literally drag and drop these students here, bum, 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 like that, into different rooms. And then they have a chat room where they can chat with one another. Um, they can't get into each other's rooms. <coughs> They're only in their own space and it records their chat. Uh, but Brian and I, as hosts, can pop in and out of the different chat rooms. So I would pop in, sort of see how things were going. Some of them were using video, some of them were just using chat. Um, and I would pop into the, I think they had the video in the chat room, in the breakout rooms, um, which ended up being great. A few of them said, you know, we, we want to actually talk to each other. So they popped in their earbuds and brought up Skype and talked and then went back to the chat to record a few things or share links. Um, so they all found their own way and did what was comfortable for them and that ended up being great because it was less management on my part and they were more comfortable with the technology. You'll also see that here we had um, Brian and me in two different places. We had one, two, three, had four students calling in from home, five students calling in from home and nobody in the Tel Aviv classroom on campus. So I think this was a Thursday night. Um, so students, we, we were just really all over the place. And somebody else, I think, joined partway through, because I think at some point there were actually six of us. Um, oh, no, the students are in six different locations. That's what it is. Um, and here, Nadia, you can see on the right, 
Nadia as a presenter, that's because her group had been presenting at this point and talking through what they were working on. Um, let me see, and I can just show you a little bit how we dealt with the tech trouble. <coughs> Let's see. Do do. So Molly here is talking about their the challenge they're having, which is figuring out how to get kids motivated to go to secondary school. She, they were looking at um, they were looking at the extremely low levels of secondary education completion among Palestinian refugees in Lebanon, in, in Lebanese refugee camps in particular. Um, and how do you motivate those students to get a secondary education, particularly in the face of Lebanese laws against um, Palestinian refugees holding Lebanese jobs or working in Lebanon holding Lebanese jobs. Um, so she was talking about, well, how do we motivate them? How do we get them to come? And Shana popped in here at about minute eight. So let's see what happens when we have a tech problem. And it happened all the time. I'm clearly curating the, the parts that worked well, but let me, let's see, Molly's still talking, okay, now Shana comes in, she had raised her hand with the flag. See, Elon is typing. <laughs> <laughs> he tells us the sound is gone. Helpful. Yeah, your mic dropped out, Shana. We lost yeah. a fair bit of class time oh, every day through this kind of thing. <laughs> Elliot says, type it for us. <laughs> and so she did. And so for the next two minutes, I think, uh, Shayna types what she's trying to say, and we just respond verbally because she can still hear us just fine and see us just fine, but we lost her mic. So we used the chat feature to keep her in the conversation, even though we had lost, lost her voice. Um, we also realized we were having some trouble with bandwidth, so I muted, I muted all of us. Um, I went, if, you, if you go up here and press, you can't quite see the, there's a, a little icon of a microphone. I can click that and mute us, so I muted all of us. I forget why I did that, but sometimes we had to mute it to prevent feedback on both ends. And then we continued typing. There we go. Shana never did get uh, the speaking working, but I brought us back in around 10 minutes and 27 seconds or so. Um, I brought the sound back in and we continued the conversation some more. Um, so we continued chatting. We went back to Molly over here. And then at 14 minutes, Elliot and Shana both jump in via chat. I don't know if it's because didn't, I didn't see them with their hands up, but they start chatting over here. So Elliot has a question. Elana's jumping in to sort of you know, respond to that question. Shana has a question she wants to add. <coughs> and so I'm responding here to Elliot's question that, that he posted if here. And then later on in the class, Brian, we switch over to Brian talking. I need to leave time for, we have one minute, but I need to allow time for Brian to jump in here because I totally dominated the last 10 minutes. I'm sorry. Brian. <laughs> he was nice to me. <laughs> so Elliot is still throwing in his thoughts. So while, while Brian is talking, I'm, respond, I'm using the chat to respond a little bit to Elliot. And so this chat keeps going a little bit while we're kind of multitasking, but it seemed to work well for us. There were few of an, enough of us there, and we were all on the same topic. I didn't even see you there. There were a few, uh, few enough of us that, in being all on the same topic, we were able to use both features, I think, I think really well. I'll stop that. And then the last thing, I'll show you what happens when the tech is just totally not in your favor. Let's see. Oh no, 
Before that, I wanted to show you how they did their final pitches. This I'll keep to just a minute, but I'll show you what it looks like. Their final pitches were when I, I, I had two students here, two students there, and a PowerPoint in the middle that they all had to use. So, in District 7 and 8 of the camp, where a particular problem has been identified. Minute 23, one of the project team starts. 23.30. Ah. OK. We're, we're going to do this as quickly as we can. Uh, Sheila, goes next. This team did an extraordinarily good project, actually. Um, if I had time, I'd just show you their presentation, but I don't. This is their PowerPoint. So what happens when we have several different videos and a PowerPoint, sorry, theirs is coming up, is that it minimizes, you might have seen this before, it minimizes all of the videos up here. Let me lower that. So we have all of us up here. You can see the Tel Aviv classroom. Um, they're actually physically present there. And this is Sushil, who's in Tel Aviv, who's starting off the presentation. And then he kicks it back to my two students who are standing up in, in suit jackets in the back of the room there. They go through a 10-minute presentation. Oops. Let's see. They go through a 10-minute presentation to about here. And we kicked it back to the That's sharing. Fine. This is called sharing <laughs> mode. <laughs> Sorry, this is discussion mode. We brought it back to discussion mode for the Q&A. And so these guys are asking questions here. You can see my two students in the back there. Elva, Elvira and Kadim are, are answering some of the questions. And this is how we did the Q&A. So each of the, each of the um, final pitches was 10 minutes of pitch, where they all had a PowerPoint that they used. Uh, some of them also, in addition to having a PowerPoint, used the desktop share mode to show a video that they had pulled up on YouTube. So uh, they would have me pull up the YouTube video, keep it in the background. I would switch out of, on, in Adobe Connect, I would switch to desktop share. I don't have a recording of this. Um, to desktop share, it would show the desktop. I would pick the video that they had picked, and then that's what would be displayed to everybody through the system. Um, and so we were able to show to show videos. And my students learned um, an important lesson by picking, one of the groups picked a video off some really random website. The video was great, but the site they got it from, slightly sketchy. Uh, and they brought up the video, and there were ads running in the side. Um, and it was a, an ad of a, of a very lewd cartoon um, doing something she really shouldn't have been doing. And my, my students were mortified. It was like a cartoon chat room, you can imagine. Um, yes. I, you know, we, we all sort of laughed and said, well, you know, let this be a lesson. But yeah, they were absolutely mortified. Um, and then just the very final, at, at minute nine, we, this was a day where we got stuck with a 15 second delay between us here at UMD and Brian at Salisbury. I have no idea where in that space Tel Aviv was. Um, <laughs> it, it was a little unclear, but, um, but yeah, so when that happens, yeah, you, you, you know, it ends up looking something like this. Awkward silence while we're listening to what he has already said, and he's wondering what's going on on our end. <laughs> this was a long, awkward yeah. silence. I'm bringing you into the end of it. And then I'm, I respond. Brian, yeah. part of what we hear you saying is that adequate buy-in and... There's still a delay, mind you. That went well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> so we, we dealt with that too. Um, I'll stop there and try to leave as much time as possible for us to discuss. Anybody have questions? I just want to say thanks for sharing this because I get so stressed about <laughs> getting the technology to go smoothly and expecting everything to go smoothly. It won't. But if I know ahead of time <laughs> that it doesn't for everybody, I'll think this will be much less stressful. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the keys is having just a really candid relationship with your students and just right out of the gate being like, this is an experiment. We're going to have tech troubles. We're going to do our best. Roll with me if you have suggestions. And, and very often, the students had better ideas than I did. Like, why don't you try this? Oh, yeah, OK. Or I have never heard of that, but show me how it works. And that, and that was great. And I think it really helped so that when things like that happen, we could just kind of you know, roll our eyes and laugh and say, OK. Um, 
But yeah, we uh, the class met for an hour and 15 minutes on Tuesdays and the same time on Thursdays. And uh, I would say on an average week, we lost maybe 10 minutes in just tech things, either trying to set something up that I was having trouble with or with people dropping in and out, say, oh, we lost you, oh, can you come back? Oh, we're getting feedback, even just that kind of thing. Um, this was the, the worst, actually, and, and I, I forget how we resolved it. I think it might have, I think we logged out of the room and then came back in and it cleared it up. By the way, if you haven't started using Adobe Connect yet, you cannot use Adobe Connect in Chrome. If you're a Chrome lover, it does not work. And we always forget and load it in Chrome anyway, and then can't figure out why it's not working. So just remember not to use it in Chrome. Questions, comments, thoughts? Well, just uh, a couple of best practices you yeah. probably like, figured out as you went along. But one, you know, the it, it's a little more difficult when you have presenters in a number of places. Yes. But the safest is for the presenter to have a, a um, hardwired internet connection mm -hmm. rather than wireless. Yeah. Because wireless fluctuates. You know, yes. In my office, I have wireless, I have an annunciator in my office, and at least twice a day, the wireless hiccups. <laughs> well, you know, if I were connecting to Adobe Connect to my wireless rather than through, through the data jack, that would, that would definitely impact my connection with them in the room. So that, that can be a help. And, and bandwidth yeah. is, a, is a huge, huge issue. It really can be. So does yeah. everybody always need to be shown visually, maybe not, you know, maybe sometimes you can step back from that a little bit, but you're really yeah. trying to bring people together in a, in, a, in a way that many of them never see each other, so that may be necessary. Yeah, it, it was important to me to have <coughs> that visual communication when possible, mm -hmm. but leave open to our just being able to hear one another, and so the 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 sessions where you see students joining in from home, most of those were towards the end of the semester, so we had already established a, a relationship. We knew what one another looked like. We kind of knew each other's voices. So it, that made that feel a little bit less remote than just a, a, a headless headless voice out there. Um, but we did, We, we it, I think the first time we tried it with people logging in from home, we had everybody bring up their video, and it took two minutes to realize that wasn't gonna fly. Uh, so we, when somebody really wanted to you know, talk for a while or present something, we would have them bring up their video and we would just kill ours temporarily or Brian or Tel Aviv would kill theirs. Um, and then they would go back to just voice and very often we kept everybody muted until they needed to speak. But you're right, the people who were trying to connect with wireless had a lot of trouble. One of the other things that I like, you have a lot of backups. Like you have the, you have the video yeah. and then you're like, okay, well then the audio. I also like the fact that you tag team for some reason. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people try to do everything at once and you can't, you know, look at the video and then answer questions and then look at the chat, you know, while he was yeah. speaking and then you did the chat. I thought that was really cool. Um, in a lot of other places, like they'll have you have like a TA or something, like a, right. a tech assistant to kind of help you out just to sort of like monitor the chat room. That helps a lot. But I really yeah. like the, the, the redundancy that you had. You had the audio, the video, the chat. Thanks. It was something that just worked itself out as we went out of necessity through the semester. Because when we first started this class, I was completely new to Adobe Connect, except for the training I had done nine months before. So I had the the, the Adobe Connect handbook printed out in my binder with me every day. <laughs> I referenced it regularly. I got to class ten minutes early, but then still we figured out. And the, it was actually the Tel Aviv students I think who figured out that that chat function could really be valuable as a way to sort of throw something in there when maybe I hadn't noticed they were trying to jump in. Um, and of course, Brian couldn't see them either, except in that tiny little window. So that, that made it a bit of a challenge, making sure that the, the Tel Aviv students were as engaged as the Maryland students, even though they didn't have Brian or me in the room with them. Yeah, it was pretty gutsy trying to do it overseas, because <laughs> you never know like, the connection that other people are going to have. Yeah, and it didn't always work. <laughs> yeah. It worked enough of the time, though, that we all got a lot out of it. So. <laughs> Yeah, exactly 20. Okay, so do you feel that that was a good number for this type of activity? And how yeah. do you think it would have shifted if you had a lot less or a lot more? Yeah, I think 20 was a good number. Um, it was enough that we got a, a lot of great input from a lot of different perspectives. Also the global nature of the course, people were from all over the world, so that, that helped. Um, it, I think this could be done with you know 15 students and still be a fairly rich conversation much less than 15 and the perspectives get a bit narrowed, but it would still be interesting. More than 20, I think it would get difficult to do it the way that I really wanted to do it, which was to try as much as possible to um, 
not replicate, but enhance the classroom and the, the classroom workshop environment through virtual technologies. Um, I really wanted to try to have that feel of collaborative problem solving as much as possible, rather than having them feel that they were really kind of out there on their own with us just checking in sometimes. Um, more than 20 students would have been difficult for Brian and me to manage, I think. Um, and it would have been really hard, I think, with the technologies, making sure that people were able to get their piece in in, this, in the time space that we had. One change we're making for next semester, and I don't think the undergrads are happy about this, but we're having it all in a single block of time, which is the way I prefer to teach workshop-based courses anyway, because that allows for more tech hiccups. Um, you know, you don't want more tech hiccups, but allows for those, the tech hiccups you're going to have anyway, not to derail huge chunks of the class. Um, you can still get a really good conversation going and bounce back from a hiccup and get back into the conversation. So now the session is going to be about, it's a, we have a two and a half hour block on Wednesday mornings. And then with the understanding that a, a lot of that time will probably only go for maybe an hour, hour and a half, but then the rest of the time the students already have it carved out in their schedules that they know they're all available so they can pull off and meet via Skype or Google Hangouts or whatever they want and meet with their project partners without trying to go through that headache. I mean, you know, our students here complain about the coordinating group work when they all live five feet from the <laughs> library, right? So, and are in the same time zone and have the same, no, they don't all have the same holidays, but you know, Maryland is off at the same time, right? So, you know, we had very, very different schedules. So having that, that space, I think, next semester where, all right, you know, we're done, but you still have another hour and you know you're all free, right? So that they'll be able to, to use that time a bit better. So I'm, I'm hoping that, that that will make this work even, even more smoothly. The Russian students? Yeah. She's your woman. Have her on speed dial. Have her office on speed dial. <laughs> I did. Yeah, yeah, we were. Yeah, because it was like, crap, it's January 1st, and I just realized that my students can't get yeah. Um, they will have a guest login, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, and they will be able to log in and use the space just like anybody else. The only thing that you have to do differently is that you can't use a regular Canvas course space. You have to use, what do they call it, a master space? A master space, a master space which is not, um, not semester bound. And it doesn't connect to the auto grade book so that you can, it doesn't, it, UMEG doesn't <laughs> automatically <laughs> pull. Yeah, thank you. It doesn't connect to UMEG. But whatever, I had 10 grades I had to enter manually on UMEG. It, you know, I was doing that two years ago anyway. <laughs> Is anybody else struggling with that same? Okay. Um, you said at first that you weren't going to use Adobe Connect. I was just wondering, like, what made you choose Adobe Connect as opposed to other options? Well, originally I had this in my head that, that I would use uh, Camtasia to you know, record PowerPoints and have Brian and me kind of voice over them. You get the little video in the corner and that seemed like it was going to be cool. And we'd, we'd do it all ahead of time and we'd upload it all ahead of time and the students would have it. A, we didn't get our act together soon enough. Um, there were so many coordination problems that we just weren't able to figure out how the semester was going to look and what the syllabus was going to look like in time to do that. But B, we ultimately just concluded, you know what, I think a lot is going to be lost if we can't talk to each other in real time. And so then it was, Skype, Google Hangouts, eh. I took the training on Adobe Connect and I realized that you could integrate PowerPoint into that. Thanks, Katishi. I realized that you could um, have multiple people coming in at the same time, which with, with Skype you can't do without a pro account. Um, the university supports it on servers here, which was going to make it more stable. And there are a few. Uh, I liked the breakout, win the, the breakout room feature, which is really neat, because I do that in my class. I go, you guys go here. But you can't do that virtually. So that enabled me to replicate that space. And um, yeah, I think those were the main reasons that I, I chose Adobe Connect. I like it a lot. I love the power of just dragging students. Through yeah, and you're going to talk to each other, bink. <laughs> exactly. And you're going to talk to her, bink. It's great. Yep. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yes. You said you didn't use the ordinary course space. Do you mean the ordinary Canvas course space? And what's the master space? I'll defer to Deb on that. Because they weren't getting UMD credit. So they're not getting UMD credit, but the people that are not getting UMD credit. Yeah, and you lose their functionality. 
Right. Yeah. It looks identical. You just can't upload sort of them back in. Yeah. So yeah. It's a manual enrollment of all students in the South State. Yeah. So so what's, what's that done? You need him to you can send an email to elms at umd.edu and say, okay, here's my deal, and we'll check back. Yeah, from my perspective, it looked and felt exactly the same. I, it, it popped up in my list when I logged into Elms. It worked identically. I just couldn't auto upload m my 10 students' grades. That was the only thing that I noticed that felt at all different. And the only thing we need to know about the students at the other universities is their email address because we build an account based on their email address. Right. And that, that login expires eventually. So my Tel Aviv students actually, uh, apparently they don't have their final grades yet, which is not my fault. Um, <laughs> There is a, a leadership change in Tel Aviv, and uh, apparently this is also very normal in that program, that things just, meh. Um, I don't know, so students are emailing me, I can't get into the Canvas space, I need my grades. Um, I really want to know how I did, because they, they aren't able to log back in. So you might want to let them know that if there are materials that they want to be able to continue to access after the end of the course, readings and things like that, they might want to download them and save them onto their hard drives. Oh, sorry. Okay. So you mentioned uh, flipping the course, yeah. and then you were talking about Camtasia, and then another thing that you can do with Adobe Connect is you can record your lecture beforehand if you kind of want to flip it. Right. And so you can kind of like record your PowerPoint beforehand, and then just kind of go through it, and then save it as a, a lecture recording. And then Which is exactly what I had intended to do for some of the sessions, but, um, but I, I still ended up lecturing a couple times with a PowerPoint, but yeah, we did both. No, we actually worked out with Tel Aviv and, and chose whether we were going to host the course material in, in their online space or ours. Basically, I just needed a way, Brian and I needed a way to get all of the readings into the same space and to be able to communicate with the students the same way. So, you know, we weren't both doing it in separate spaces and, and maybe accidentally doing different things. Um, and so we just had a back and forth with Tel Aviv and ultimately decided that this would be easier. And what was the deciding factor was that our, our Elm space connects to the library course at E-Reserves. So I could have the library scan and upload our readings. We wouldn't have had that option in Tel Aviv, and, and that ended up being the, what made the deal. And good for me, I didn't have to learn another system. <laughs> Other thoughts, comments? No? And I, I want to thank Raluca Nahorniak for giving me the opportunity to do this from the Office of International <laughs> Affairs. <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks for having me. This was fun.